Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to count or sum based on either the cell color or the font color. Now there's no native way of doing this in Excel. So what we're gonna do is create some custom functions using Visual Basic for Applications. Now the code for the functions, I've left a link to in the description of this video. Now I'll show you how to install the code into the sheet that you want to do these calculations on. So you right click on the sheet name and then you go to view code and then you want to look for the sheet that you're going to perform these calculations in. You should see it down the left side here. Just make sure that's selected. Double click on it if you're not sure. And then in this code window, you want to paste the following code. Now, as I said, this code is available via a link in the description of this video. And the only thing you really need to be worried about is this range of cells here. Now I've specified C2 to C21 and L2 to L21. I'll just show you why. C2 to C21 is where I've colored the cells that I want to base my sum or my count on. And over here, L2 to L21 is where I've colored the font of the cells that I want to base my calculations on. So you need to change this range here to reflect the range of cells that are colored that you want to base your calculation on. I've got two there. If you've only got one, then it would look like this. So then what you want to do is go to insert module. That'll create a module. And then in the code window for that module, you want to paste this code in. And again, this code is available via a link in the description of this video. And this code includes two functions. One's called count color, and the other is called sum color. Now, just to briefly go through these functions, each function has three arguments. Range count, so that's the cells that you're doing your counting in. Then color cell is the cell that contains the color that you want to base the counting on. And then criteria is where you're able to specify that you either want to count based on the cell color or the font color. And you can see how if I enter cell in that argument, then it's going to base the criteria on the cell color. But if I put in font, it's gonna base the criteria on the font color. Now down here, I've got a for each next loop that uses this count variable to basically increment the count by one every time the criteria is met. Now some color works in a very similar way. It has three arguments, the same three arguments, and I can enter a cell or font in the criteria argument. And what it does down here is do a for each next loop. And instead of counting, it's basically using the total variable to add up all of the values that have met either the cell color criteria or the font criteria. So let's see how you can use both of these functions. So I'll start with the criteria based on cell color. So in the cell that I want to do the calculation in, I'm going to type equals count color, and you can see it in the IntelliSense list. Now, if you forget the order of the arguments, what you can do is use this shortcut key, Control Shift A, and that'll list the names of the arguments within your custom function. Now range count is the range of cells that I'm doing the counting in based on color. So that's this range of cells here. And I will need to lock that range because I'm going to copy this formula down. So I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard. Color cell, well that's the cell that contains the color that I'm basing my count on. So that's here. Criteria, I'm basing it on the cell color. So I have to put cell in, in speech marks. So if I press enter and then copy this down, it will do that counting for me. If I want to do some color, it works in a similar way. Control Shift A, that gives me the argument name. So range sum, that's the range of cells that I'm summing based on color. And I need to lock that. Color cell, that's the cell that contains the color I'm using as my criteria. And criteria here would also be cell. 
And if I copy this down, it will sum based on that color criteria. Now, if you want to do the exact same calculations, but based on font, then it is exactly the same, except that instead of cell, you're gonna put font in that final argument, and that's for count color and for some color. Now you might be wondering why we had that other bit of code here in the sheet code window. And this is so that our custom function automatically updates if the color of cells change within the sales column in either C or in L. So for example, if I change this cell color to red and then click somewhere else in that column, you can see that it updates all of my formulas. Without that bit of code in the sheet code window, that wouldn't take place. What you need to know though, however, is if I did the same thing and formatted that cell with a red background, but clicked outside that range, it wouldn't update the formulas. And that's because the selection change must occur within either column C or column L. And the reason I've done it that way is that I don't want to slow down the spreadsheet. At the moment, it's only going to recalculate if there's a selection change within these ranges. If I don't specify those ranges, so in other words, if it looked like this, then it would recalculate wherever there was a selection change in your sheet. Okay, so I'll leave those lines in the code. Now, two things you need to know before I finish the video. The first is this won't work with conditional formatting, but conditional formatting is already based on criteria that's present within your spreadsheet. So all you need to do is express the same criteria that you're using for conditional formatting within your SUMIF and your COUNTIF function. The other thing you need to know is that when you save the file, you must save it as a macro enabled workbook. Otherwise it won't retain the VBA functions that we've created. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.